Anyway, anyway, anyway. So I was on my way today to the Pope on Film Studios yes. to record the podcast. Not too many people know this, but we actually record the Pope on Film podcast live in front of a heavily sedated studio audience at our state-of-the-art, the Pope on Film headquarters in beautiful downtown Shawnee, Oklahoma. Uh I say heavily sedated studio audience because we actually drug them so that they'll sit for the whole three or four or five or six hours Yes, of the podcast. We Because we don't want them to be cheering or screaming or getting up to use the bathroom. So they, they come into the studio and then we dope them up so that they're pretty much asleep throughout the entire thing. So we do record in front of a live studio audience, but a live heavily sedated studio audience. Yeah, alive is subjective. Yeah, yeah. In front of a quote-unquote live studio audience. So um, so on my way to the Pope on Film Studios, I passed by one of our three movie theaters yeah. in town. There are three movie theaters. There's one inside of the mall, and I've only been there once or twice, and I've never been there again because it sucks. There's also a movie theater uh, on Harrison, and that's yeah. the really nice one. I, I, I God, how long have we been in Oklahoma? Five or six years? Because I took Bella, a very young Bella, to go see the Lorax at that theater. And that seems like forever ago. That was forever ago. Yeah. So, God, we've been here yeah, for a while. say five or six years. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I really like that theater. It's still shit, but it's less shit than the movie theater in the mall. And then there's a really huge theater, and I love it so much. The, uh, no, I'm not talking about the Warren Theater. I'm talking about the theater downtown. It's this really nice old theater, and it's been around since the 1940s. Yeah. And I found I found these old uh, archive photographs of the theater the day that the the birds came out, and the marquee is all lit up. It, Alfred Hitchcock's new thriller, The Birds, and it's you know they've it, they've got like an old Cadillac just pulled up right at the front of the theater yeah and it's this old grand theater so of course now it's shit so it's mm -hmm. it's it's actually dollar theater in town oh that's pitiful oh but it's so it, it, and the the screen is shit and you can't see that great but it's just i love it so much because it's just you get a tiny little taste of how good the theater used to be yeah. You know, like you go into the theater and it's this massive, cavernous, old, grand theater and it's huge. And you just look at it and you go, man, back in the day when it wasn't showing shit, I bet this was really nice. You get a tiny taste of it. Yeah. You can also you can also tell that the theater was built in the 40s because when you go into the bathroom, you're basically peeing in a small closet. <laughs> It's obvious that when the bathroom was built, it's it, they went, okay, this is the biggest bathroom ever built in Oklahoma. You can fit five people in here. Of course, five people will never be going to the bathroom at the same time. It's the early 40s. Mm -hmm. I, I still kind of get excited whenever I walk into a bathroom and there's a full wall urinal. Oh, yeah, a trough. A trough. No, 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 not a trough. The ones that go straight up and down, so it's like pissing mm. on a wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's exactly yeah. the reason I like it. Yeah, the Arizona State Fair used to have the troughs. Uh, I've I've peed in troughs as well. Yeah, yeah. This but, uh, it's kind of the same thing. Just turn that trough around. Yeah. Turn the trough around. <laughs> You're peeing on the wall now. Turn the trough around. Love to hear the peeing. There so, we go. So I always read the marquee of the theater when I'm passing by to see what's playing. And so I was I was passing by the theater on Harrison, and it's like an eight-screen theater. 
and that's huge for these uh, Shawnians, yeah. Shawnians, and it. They had a movie that was playing that I was unaware of. I, I hadn't heard of this movie, and I was kind of shocked because I try and keep up to date with movies. Well, with this being an alleged movie podcast, yes. So I was shocked by the, this movie because I hadn't heard of it. But uh, I've got the name here. I wrote it. I immediately wrote it down. I, I may have uh, veered into another lane. But the point is, I grabbed a piece <laughs> of paper and a pen, and I wrote down the name of this movie. It's a bit of a long name. The film is called The Dark Tower Hitman's Bodyguard, Dunkirk, Wind River. Wow. Who's in it? Um. Well, first off, let's be clear. This isn't about the Dark Tower hitman. That's a secondary character. It's about his bodyguard, whose name is Dunkirk Wind River. Now, with a last name, Wind River, I'm assuming Lou Diamond Phillips stars in this film. Is he still alive? I I I'm, know I'm still... not sure. But if he's alive, he's definitely starring as Native American bodyguard Dunkirk Wind River. And and who's Andy Garcia? I don't know. Whenever I think of, of Lou Diamond Phillips, I think of Andy Garcia pretty much at the same time. Um, yeah. They have a similar look. They both for, are forced to play the ethnic type. Yeah. And their careers have both had just about the same trajectory. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much that's pretty much it. I feel Andy Garcia though gets a lot more respect, though. Than... He's whiter. He's whiter. Yeah, yeah, he's it's whiter. true. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, so the film is about a a rough, tough, half Native American, half French, I believe, bodyguard, a French Native American named uh, Dunkirk Wind River. Uh huh. His first name is, of course, uh, it comes from the place where he was conceived, <laughs> Dunkirk. And then his last name, of course, is a legendary tribal name. Yeah. And so, but just because he's a French Native American bodyguard doesn't mean that this is a film based in reality. Because the, the story is really about the Dark Tower. Now, in my mind... I only read like the first book or maybe the first book in the second book. Yeah. I think I read the first two books and then I tapped out. Um, speaking of tapping out, I'm going to tap out later. So keep an ear out for that. Okay. So I'm, I'm assuming that the dark tower is basically like the Pentagon of this other universe. So the dark tower has like a, you know, a, you know, maybe the, the evil King, the evil queen, the jester, maybe a Sabaros in there. Yeah. Um, a gift shop. Uh, the Dark Tower band. Is probably <laughs> stuff like that. And of course, you know, if the evil king and queen are living inside the Dark Tower, of course they need a hitman. But what happens when the Dark Tower hitman is in trouble? Then mm -hmm. Andy Garcia, who is the evil guy in charge of the Dark Tower, he's the evil king of the Dark Tower. He hires a bodyguard for his hitman and that's what the movie is about the dark tower hitman's bodyguard dunkirk wind river very excited to see this movie as it long sounds, as it's it sounds good yeah no it sounds great i'm really excited so be sure and check that out in theaters now or at least in shawnee the dark tower hitman's bodyguard dunkirk wind river i'm sure that that's going to be a name you're going to hear a lot during awards season yeah so keep your ears out.